Hello, hello. Thanks for joining us for another episode. My name is Amelia Page. I'm the communications director here at Grace Fellowship Church. Today, we are continuing right where we left off last week. I'm still talking with both of my parents, Roy and April Mack. And if you're able to, I highly suggest that you grab something to take notes right now as you're listening, whether that's on your phone or writing them down. So if you're not driving, go ahead and get ready to take some notes. My dad particularly takes time working through the gospel and how to walk someone through it as you're sharing your faith. So if you're new to this, definitely want to take notes through this episode. Um, This episode is really what we've been working towards this whole season, and I'm praying that it will be a game changer for you. So let's go ahead and listen. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Grace Cast. This is what, episode four, four. of this season? And I'm joined again by my parents, Roy and April Mack, both of them. Hello. Hey, everybody. It's a very lucky day for everyone that they're both here. And we really just wanted to continue last week's conversation. We started talking about how to really have a conversation with those people on your list about sharing about your faith and how to actually do that and what that conversation needs to include. And we feel kind of like in the last conversation, we kind of ended it right when we were getting to the part of what to actually say in that conversation. And so that's what we're going to do today is these are the things that you should be asking them, should be saying these are the basic elements of the gospel that need to be understood. So that's what we're going to get into today. Of course, the first week of the podcast we talked about, we gave you the challenge to write your story, get those details worked out of how you came to Christ and how that changed you and how to share that story. The second week, we challenged you to make a list of people to begin praying for that they would come to know Christ and that God would give you opportunity to share your story with them and that you would see them come to know Christ. And then last week we talked about really praying that God would give you eyes to see people the way that he sees people, that you would really begin to ask yourself who in your life does or doesn't know Jesus and gave you some scripture to begin memorizing. And so that's what we're going to be feeding off of today. And if you haven't done those challenges yet, make sure, add that to your list of things to do Mm -hmm. this week. It's really important. So we're going to hunt you down and preach to you. Right. We won't, we won't do that. We won't know, but still it's important. So how do we begin to have this conversation? What are some of the elements that need to be included? I want to touch on just a couple of things that that Amelia just reminded us of when you're, when you're telling your story, uh, it's highly important that you tell your story in a way that you're weaving God's story into that. Mm -hmm. Uh, And in you telling your story of how you came to faith, you're letting somebody else know, have you done this or have you not done this? Because uh, we're not we're not here to talk about religion or where you go to church and all that kind of stuff. We're here to talk about have you put faith in what Christ has done mm-hmm. and has that changed your life? So again, but, you so got to Can know. I say, for instance, mm-hmm. in that, I don't want to throw you off track, but so when I tell my story, I was saved as an 11 year old girl. But the thing is, I grew up in a Christian home. I'd gone to church all of my life, but that did not make me saved. My dad was a pastor. My grandfathers were both pastors, but that didn't mean I was automatically saved. And so when I tell my story, I like to include the fact that at 11-year-old girl, grossly in sin. (laughs) I mean, the thing is at 11 years old, other than disobeying my parents and Mm -hmm. maybe cheating a little bit on a test at school, telling some lies. But the truth is that was sin. And I still Mm -hmm. had to be saved from that. I was born into sin and I needed a savior. And so I confessed my sin, repented of that and asked God to save me. And so when I tell my story, those are the parts that I include in that because it's important to know even at 11 years old, I needed to be forgiven of my sin. And it's mm-hmm. a teaching point. We're not sinners because of the sins we do. We're sinners because the, of the sinners, sinners we are. Yes. Right. We're, we're born into sin. And uh, no one had to give us lessons on how to be jealous, tell lies. You know, right. all, all, it's, it's our nature. We inherited that nature. But even as a 
cute blonde blue eyed girl at mm-hmm. 11 years old. And I need <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I needed to be saved. Yeah. And that's my point. And so I'm able to share that in telling my story. So, right. you know, in telling my story, I'm making sure that I'm pointing out I'm a, I was a sinner and I needed mm-hmm. to be forgiven of my sin. And I decided on purpose to follow right. after Christ and ask him to save me. And God loved me. God, yeah. You know, God. It was yes. God's love tracking me down to yes. to make that happen. So, so as we're starting this, these are the things that need to be included in your conversation. And if you are listening and you are able to take notes as you listen to this conversation, I highly encourage you to do that because there's a lot here, and right. um, you don't want to miss a piece. The piece you miss may be the piece <laughs> that they really needed to hear. The really puzzle. important part. So, um, so. I like what you were just saying. I think two really great places to start is God loves you, but we have a sin problem. So, Mm -hmm. well, so if you, again, if you're taking notes, uh, write a reference of John three 16, Mm -hmm. the motivation for God sending Jesus to die on the cross was he loved us Uh, as a a major theme of the Bible is God loves us. Uh, So you want to be able to convey that first. I think Mm -hmm. you begin in God's love, Uh, Romans five, eight, but God demonstrated or commended or showed his love toward us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, to, to memorize that, uh, April gave last time, last week, Ephesians uh, 2, 8 and 9, uh, talking about we, we can't work our way in. It's not in us mm-hmm. uh, to do that. You know, it's not by works that we're saved, but by grace, grace right. but by yeah. grace. Uh, so, have those down. And I think the next verse that you want to come to, and and again, let's say you're in front of somebody, you've told them your story and you ask them for permission. Would you give me a few minutes mm-hmm. to tell this? What you're really asking is don't interrupt me, mm-hmm. you know, and if they interrupt you with a, a question, don't be afraid of the question. You move the question. Can we take that question and move it to the end and let me tell you what I have come to tell you, mm-hmm. right? you know, because a natural man receives not the things of the spirit. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now then it's, it, it, I would say Romans three twenty three, uh, because we're, we're talking about God's love. He loved us while we we're yet sinners, Romans five, eight, but Romans three twenty three talks about for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Mm-hmm. In other words, God's standard is perfection. And only perfect people can go to heaven. And you can pause right there because mm-hmm. if they know you, they know you're not perfect. Right. There are no perfect people. Jesus is the standard of perfection. I can't go to heaven based on what I have done or what I'm doing because I can't work my way in. But I can go to heaven based on what he's done for me. He's died on the cross. He's died in my place. I, I'm a sinner. God's standard was perfection, and I, I can't get there, and neither can you. Mm-hmm. I'm not here to tell you you're a sinner, and I'm not. I'm here to say we're sinners. Mm-hmm. We're all sinners. So, you know, to, to memorize that that verse and to put it down, uh, you guys just want me to continue through the plan of salvation here? You want to talk about any piece of this? Go for it. Yeah. Go all right. Um, Romans 6.23 is, is another verse that you, when I say write it down, you can take written cards down mm-hmm. or have a Bible and have it marked. But a great way to memorize scripture is to write it on the index card. Put it on your mirror. Put it in your car when you're driving. Start your day talking about it until it just it just flows out of you. But Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death. That's half the verse. Mm-hmm. And, and I always stop right there because we're talking about you're a sinner, but understand there's a penalty on sin. You know, we, we know it in society. You do the, you do the crime, you do the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and spiritually speaking, it's the same way. We have sinned against God. We're not just sinning against each other as part of it, but we have sinned against God. We've broken His, his mm-hmm. law. Mm-hmm. And, and with that, the wages of sin is death. The statistics on dying are pretty strong. Mm-hmm. One in every one dies. You know, there's some things you can't argue with. We're going to die. Right. Uh, the wages of our sin is death, but the mm-hmm. death that's being talked about right there is far more than a physical death. It is a spiritual death, which mm-hmm. means a separation from God in eternity if our mm-hmm. sins are not forgiven and we've not come to Christ as Savior. Mm-hmm. So, again, you'll learn better how to intertwine your story into that and talk about it. But I always then say, but that... 
listen, if it that verse just ended there, we'd all be mm-hmm. in bad news. Mm-hmm. The wages of sin is death, and we're all going to die, and we're going to be separated from God. But the rest of that verse says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our mm-hmm. Lord. It is a gift. Yeah. Salvation is a gift. It is in Christ. He gives it to us. Uh, for God so loved the world, He gave. Mm-hmm. He gave a gift. It, you know, and it's, again, whosoever, anybody that put their faith in that, they, they can be saved. So the wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Mm-hmm. And I, and that, you mm-hmm. know, for depending on who you're talking to, what the situation is, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, right. not through baptism, not through good works, not through a right. priest, right. through Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the door. Yeah. No man cometh to him right. except through Jesus. So he's the door to God. And so that's mm-hmm. how our salvation, and you know, and, and again, that's being perceptive to who you're with mm-hmm. and what their background is and what they're how they're thinking, well, if you know that. Religious people and self-righteous people will always want to tell you what they're doing right? Yeah, in order to be saved. Or they want to compare themselves to somebody else. Right. right. Well, I'm as good as you. Well, I don't deny that. Yeah. yeah. You're probably better than me, you know, as far as what, whatever. But that's like saying, though, how high can everybody jump? And you can jump really high, but we got to jump to the moon. It's <laughs> yeah. not going to matter how high you can yeah. jump. Yeah. The standard of salvation would be from here to the moon, you know, in, right. in, a, in a comparative kind of a thing. And mm-hmm. uh, not with any help whatsoever could we ever achieve that. Mm-mm. So we have to go to someone who created all things and who has done all things and who is perfect. Mm -hmm. So our our salvation is, as April said, through Christ Jesus, our Lord. We make him Lord. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lots of people, again, religious people will say, I've always believed that. Mm -hmm. I've always believed that. Well, Satan has always believed that too. Mm -hmm. You know, he is a personal savior until it becomes a personal decision at a, at a pinpointed time in our life uh, that that we go back to, Mm -hmm. you know, we're, we'll be we'll be without the helmet of salvation. We won't know that we know. Mm-hmm. We won't be able to help anybody so else. That, I want to talk about that because I think that's something that um, a lot of people would say, well, okay, I have always believed that. And I know what you're saying is you can mm-hmm. say, well, so as Satan's always believed that. But then what do you say to them beyond that? You know, you Satan's always believed that too, but when did you, what do you say? I, I think when you can... When you can deal with people the way Jesus dealt with people is always the best way to deal with people. Jesus dealt with them where they were. Mm-hmm. Um, again, as you get better at, you know, these these are learned skills. Mm-hmm. Uh, sharing your faith, you share your faith, you tell your story, you trust God for all of it. But there are certain things that that are learned skills that we pick up from what what did Jesus say? He met people where they are. He gave illustrations in their life that they could understand. Right. You know, I, I mean, most people, they they understand something like, well, if I wrote you a check for $100,000 and I gave it to you and you knew I was good for it. In other words, you believe that if I cash this, I'd have $100,000. But you just take that check and you fold it up and you put it in your front pocket a mere half inch from your heart, that check never does you any good. Mm. You you say, I believe, but it's different when you go to the bank and you turn the check over and you put your name on it. And you say, I believe that Roy Mack is good for this money and I'm ready now to make it mine. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. And so you're endorsing, you're making it personal. You're putting your name on it. I believe, well, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Okay. When did you put your name on that? When did you take that mm-hmm. to the spiritual bank and cash it for your salvation? Mm-hmm. You know, for, for you to have that. Most people, when you're talking about a gift, I, I, I use this uh, quite often. There's only three things you can do with a gift. You can receive a gift. You can ignore a gift or reject a gift. Most of the people that I talk to about salvation are not rejectors. I get a few people who are rejectors. I don't believe in God. I don't want anything to do with Jesus, the church, Christians. I hate everybody. (laughs) But that's very few people. Most people have simply ignored what they say they really believe. Mm -hmm. They've ignored to do anything with it in a personal manner. 
again, I, and sometimes I'll just take something that that is uh, a, a gift and hand it over to someone and say, when does this gift become yours? You know, I'm giving you this. When does it become mm-hmm. yours? Well, well, when I receive it. Mm-hmm. That's right. And so salvation is something to be received. And then that moves you to the next verses that you need to that you need to, to memorize. It's Romans a 10, 9 and 10, add verse 13 to that as well. It is talking about if you'll confess your, with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe that God has raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. Uh, verse 13 says, whosoever, anybody that will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So uh, the scripture is telling us there that it, for that salvation is something you confess with your mouth that, and believe in your heart for you to be saved. You receive it. Another illustration would be marriage. I think mm-hmm. I've already done this on one of the one of the podcasts, yeah. but you're you're not married until right. your mouth confesses what your heart desires to do. And I, I think of it, I was just thinking about that as you said that, because I think of Jesus came to some of the disciples before they were his disciples when he first met them and he said, mm-hmm. Follow me. And they made a decision to follow after Christ. When somebody decides to follow after Christ, they are making a decision. And, and and I believe that with all my heart. There's a decision that is made. Am I going to follow after Christ or am I going to keep living my life on my own terms? And mm-hmm. when we, you know, it's one thing you could say, oh, yeah, I'm going to follow after Christ. But when they followed after Christ, they laid down they left their, their life. fishing nets and they followed after Christ. When I got married, I laid down my the way my life was before. And I went home with Roy Mack Mm -hmm. and, and my life looked different. And so some people would say, she was a lucky girl too. Yeah. Some people would say, I've believed that all my life or I've always followed after God. But when was the decision and when did you leave the past behind and And determine that I'm going to follow after Christ? And what changed? If nothing changed, that's, you know, it's probably happy talk. Mm-hmm. So you're leading a person to a place of, you know, you're, you've are you told them your story, what you've done. You've shared with them the gospel. And if you if this is what you've done, if you've prayed for them and you want them to receive it, I've come to ask you if mm-hmm. you would like to receive Christ. And, and without hesitation, tell them you can do what I did mm-hmm. and just pray mm-hmm. to to receive him as your savior. And if you're a part of our church, you hear me do this every week at our church. And you know what? People every week get saved. Someone recently was uh, saved in one of our virtual services that has attended our church for more than a year. Mm-hmm. But this was the day. The, yeah. the, I mean, this was a day that God opened their heart and they mm-hmm. prayed. They prayed a prayer behind me line by line. I would write the prayer out. Uh, a, a prayer that, you know, that just simply says something like this. Dear God, I do believe that you love me. I confess that I'm a sinner. Mm-hmm. It's all these things that you're seeing in that's already been said here. You, if God's touching their heart and drawing them, yeah. it's it's their mouth confessing that what their heart wants to do. So I, I confess that I'm a sinner. I believe that you, Jesus, died on the cross right. for my sins. And the best I know how. Doesn't that sound like something for God? Mm -hmm. The best I know how. Right. I'm putting my faith in you, Mm -hmm. asking you to forgive me of my sins, to be my Savior, asking it by faith. Amen. What you're saying is by faith, I agree with what you have told me. Mm -hmm. When I'm there dealing with someone, I'm not telling them, hey, these are my words. This is what God says about this subject. Right. The subject of salvation. I want you to be saved. Mm -hmm. And I, I prayed for you and, uh, you know, if again, if you know them well and you're comfortable with it, can I, can I just take you by the hand? And would you like to pray that prayer and receive mm-hmm. Christ like I just did? Could, would you do that? Mm-hmm. When they put their hand in yours, that's a yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and 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 just to pray. So I I, I look back, um, and I know April could say the same thing. The the greatest moments of my life have been leading people to Christ. Mm-hmm. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them where their hand went into mine mm-hmm. yeah. and, and, and prayed. Yeah. Um, can I tell just a quick story too of yeah. um, April and I were um, several months ago in, in Atlanta. We stopped to see some friends that uh, we were 
privilege to be their pastor of for a lot of years. And um, uh, my friends, Melvin, I hope that Melvin and Debbie will watch this. But <laughs> uh, I led Melvin to Christ 19 years ago. And he has cancer and, you know, I've come through what I've come through and they were kind of in another town and we made the drive out to see them in the hospital. And um, right before we walked in, they were literally talking about us and they were talking about it was 19 years ago on that day that I stopped by and led Melvin to Christ. And I walked in and they were talking about it and they were like, oh my gosh, here wow. you guys are. <laughs> we were just saying. Mm-hmm. And what they're in what they were getting at, there was that was the most important event mm-hmm. in their life. Mm-hmm. The 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 day that you know for like Melvin particularly, Debbie was already a Christian and and was, you know, praying for her husband and on me about coming to see him. And um and, and by the way, I didn't make an appointment with Melvin. He wasn't the kind of guy you can make an appointment with. Mm-hmm. And I mentioned there's every now and again, you got to come bring the hammer. I I came in and turned the man's television off. He was Mm -hmm. watching a basketball game. I have never in my life done that with anybody else's house and just said, Melvin, I'm here to talk to you about your soul. Mm -hmm. But I would say, too, that is not in your nature at all to be that way. That really must have been a Holy Spirit thing. It it, it definitely was. (laughs) Don't try that. Don't try that at home. You might get beat up. (laughs) But, Truly um, don't act that way unless you feel the spirit calling you to act right. that way. <laughs> but you know what? Uh, his wife had been praying for him. Yeah, I'd prayed up for him mm-hmm. and I wasn't going to stop by and say a bunch of religious stuff. Oh, I was just in the neighborhood and thought I'd come in right, for a right. church visit. No, I've come in and talked about your soul. Mm-hmm. And about 20 minutes later, mm-hmm. Melvin got on his knees and received Christ. I We trained him mm-hmm. in soul winning, just like we're talking about in, the, in classes he became one of the best soul winners, yes. one of the best soul winners I've ever known. That is church speak for best person at sharing your faith <laughs> and sharing right. your story. Yes. <laughs> yes. But, yeah. And, and, you know, the, what I want to just say is a closing thought. I know we're about out of time. Okay. You don't have to know everything mm-hmm. and you don't have to be an expert. Should you be prepared? Sure, you should be prepared. Yeah. Know what you can know. But the Holy Spirit will direct you. If you will pray and you have a heart of just wanting somebody Mm -hmm. to know Christ because you know Christ and Mm -hmm. it's changed your life. When you get ready to talk to somebody, you will be amazed. There's two things you'll be amazed at. You'll be amazed at what Satan will do to to hinder that. (laughs) I've sat in rooms with babies and dogs while Roy has led somebody to Christ because yeah. Their, you know, house was crazy and the random neighbor shows up and, you know, everything in the world. I've been stung by wasp multiple times. Just because the gospel. We, are, that, <laughs> we are. We're on Satan's territory and he doesn't like it. And then the other thing, though, is that our God is greater and the mm-hmm. Holy Spirit is greater. And the Holy Spirit will give you the words to say. Yeah. Commit yourself to God mm-hmm. and let him use you. And, and there's just there is absolutely nothing yeah. sweeter in the world than knowing that you had a God encounter and that God used you right. to right. change someone else's life. Yeah. And, and salvation's of God. It is you, of you, God. You, you, he's just looking yeah. for somebody usable. Yeah. You're just Go the, be available and usable. Well, I'm glad tool. you said that, Mom, because that's kind of what I was about to say. That and the flip side of that, of this does sound like a, we went over a lot in this conversation and it's a lot. Of, if you were taking notes, that was a lot of notes and you, mm-hmm. there's a lot there. It's the gospel is not like a, it is simple, but it is yet profound and complex and yes. something to really understand, right. to share with someone else. So as you're praying that God would give you divine appointments, be preparing for those divine appointments. Mm-hmm. Yes. The Holy spirit will give you what to say, but have said the sinner's prayer a couple of times out loud so that when you go to say it, you don't go blank and forget mm-hmm. what you were going to say. Just simple things like that. Yes. Of memorizing those scriptures, like you said, having them where you see them often, where they are something you are breathing in and out every day, being in your word in general and praying for those opportunities. Right. But be prepared. Mm-hmm. Be preparing for what you're asking God to give you. Mm-hmm. We can, um, as a tool, I would love to provide like a little uh, five by seven card with some of the key verses in the sinner's prayer at the bottom of that, we can laminate those and you could keep those. You could keep it in your purse and 
um, a pocket, you know, whatever for somebody to have handy. And especially then when you're going to talk with somebody, because then you have Mm -hmm. the information right in front of you and you can breed that mm-hmm. prayer you need to be prepared nothing but, wrong with that either but yeah. tools you know having tools is great and especially then when you i've hey i've been nervous and you know back before we had all our bibles on our phones and flipping through verses and you know you can't get the page to turn and mm-hmm. you know you get nervous but what's amazing is it doesn't matter how much if you mess up because if god's already worked in that person's heart and they're they ready. say yes yeah. and they're ready Mm-hmm. You know, you are, you do want to be prepared, no doubt. Yeah. That's where God you're glad you, it's but. not in your power at all. It's exactly. really not up to you what happens. It's yes. God is in control and God's spirit is already working. Yes. So today's challenge would be look at your notes from this episode. And I would just say begin to mm-hmm. make some memory cards, make some um, notes around your house and take mm-hmm. some time and go through these things and be intentional about, I'm going to memorize this prayer to share with someone else. I'm going to have it written down in my car in case I have a God opportunity, a divine appointment happens and I can share my faith that I have these verses and the prayer written down so that I can share that with someone else and just be, be preparing for the divine appointments that you're praying would happen. Be preparing for what you've asked God to do. So the fields are wide and to harvest, you know, mm-hmm. there's, Anytime you're in public, if you look around you, you can just about bet that almost everybody you're looking at needs to know Christ. Mm -hmm. And how amazing if you can be that willing vessel that God can use. And um, I think it's, you know, and probably another episode, but just talking about how the importance of testimony, um, you know, you can't be a great witness if you've got a bad testimony and how important it is to just live a a life that is God honoring. Mm -hmm. God wants to use you. So be willing, be, be ready. Yes. So we'll see you next week with more on this. So. All right. Thanks everybody. So as you just heard, today's challenge is to get prepared, look through your notes, make notes, have an outline and your key verses ready to go on your phone or in your car. Let's be preparing for the appointments that we've asked God to give us. Next week, we are wrapping up this topic with just one more episode. I'll be talking about how discipleship and evangelism really go hand in hand. I'll be having that conversation with Pastor Zach Potter. So go ahead and subscribe so that you don't miss it next Wednesday. We will see you then. And of course, we would love to have you join us for church this Sunday at 9 and 11 a.m. You can check the descriptions for links on where to join us virtually. Bye.